Uh, and welcome to our YP annual. It's been a while since we had one of these, uh, so it's good to see you here this morning. And as Andy said, it's lovely to, to see so many young people, especially our, some of our Mayhem family. It's good to have you guys here. Um, we're just going to start by singing the song that the band already played for us. Uh, number 321 in the songbook, I Dare to be Different. <laughs> share a prayer together. Father God, I just want to thank you for bringing us all here this morning safely, uh, despite the the weather going on outside. Um, I thank you for our young people this morning as we focus on them. I thank you for all they bring to our church family, whether that's on a Sunday or on a Monday or whatever time of the week it is. Just pray you'll be with us now as we share in time together. You'll bless it and you'll be with us all. Amen. Uh, The band... They're going to bring to us their message now.
We're going to uh, play uh, for you this morning uh, the march Fill the World with Music by Eric Silverberg. And while there won't be words up on the screen, it does incorporate a couple of tunes which will be familiar to some. But uh, primarily it's about the Salvation Army um, sharing the message of God through music, which we do um, with our band and with our songsters and by other means as well. Lift up the army banner, there's one chorus that's there, and God's soldier marches as to war. We're going to fill, fill, fill the world with glory. Fill the world with music. time now for our younger people and I need two volunteers and I wonder Jessica and Stacy do you think you'd be up for coming and helping me with something do you think you'd be up for that yeah Go on, give me a hand. of our Monday Mayhem family you alright Stacy you doing okay Jessica. Right, now you two, your sisters, yeah? You've known each other for a long, long time. Do you trust each other? Yeah? That was very quick, I like that. Do they trust each other, Mum? We think? Trust each No? Okay. Have you heard of a trustful? Yeah? So what we're going to try today is we're going to try and do some trustfuls, okay? Who wants to go first? You gonna... Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought you put your hand up to volunteer then. No, okay. Right, Jessica, turn around. Okay, and Stacey, you're going to stand behind you. Come here, come here. Come here. Okay, so you face that way. Right, now you put your arms out, Stacey. Jessica, you can close your eyes. Arms across your chest. Ready? And fall backwards. Oh, that's nice. Well done, well done. Should we try it the other way around? Now, now that you've trusted her, should we see if Stacey trusts you just as much? Okay, so you turn around. I see, here we go. Are you ready? Close your eyes. Three, two, one, go. Yeah, there we go. That's brilliant. Well done. Now, 
We tried trust falls. Don't go away, don't go away, don't go away. Come back, come back. You don't get off that lightly. Now, we tried trust fall. I want to try something called a faith fall, okay? So, Stacey, if you can stand just a bit further back. And Jessica, you come this way. Okay? What I'm going to do, you can see where, where Stacey is, yeah? I'm going to blindfold you now. Okay? And then I'm going to ask you to fall backwards. Do you trust Stacey to catch you? You don't? Okay. Should we try it? We'll try it. You take, do you want to take glass off just to be safe? I'll look after them for you. There we go. Lovely. All right, we're going to blindfold you. Okay, ready? All right. Now, can you see anything? Nothing at all. Okay, so you saw where Stacy was, didn't you? Okay, so on the count of three, I'm going to ask you to fall backwards. Okay, you ready? One, two, three. Go on, do, do you trust your big sister? You don't know. <laughs> it's changed a bit now, hasn't it? Now that I blindfolded you, you're not so sure. Hmm? Can Stacy go first? No. You try anyway? Give it a go. Do you trust me? No! How many times have I asked that question by young people and they always say no? Right, Jessica, I promise you, you're not going to hurt. You're not going to get hurt, okay? I promise you someone will catch. Okay? Trust me? You're going to fall backwards. This way you're stood now. Okay, on the count of three, you're just going to fall backwards. Ready? One, two, three. There we go. Well done. Okay? That wasn't so hard, was it? Is that all right? Now, I noticed before you two were saying you trusted each other. It was great, wasn't it? It was easy. It was fine. But as soon as there was a bit of doubt, as soon as I said, you're not allowed to look, and Stacey was still all the way over there, you didn't want to do it, did you? It's like that little bit of trust and faith in your sister. It's cool. Thank you for your help, girls. But stay there because we're going to do a song. So do the rest of our young people want to come give me a hand? Oh, yeah, glass is fun. Young people, do you want to give me a hand with some actions? We're going to do a song. Stay up here, Stacey. We're going to do an action song. It's going to be great. Come on, guys, come join me. Come join me. We're going to do a song. It's called Faith as Small as a Mustard Seed, okay? And we're going to, we're going to teach some actions. We're going to try and learn some actions and we're going to sing the song, okay? So should we spread out all the way down? Spread all the way around. That's it. Okay, so the actions go like this. You watching? Ready? We're going to go. Faith as small as a mustard seed can move mountains, move mountains. Faith as small as a mustard seed can move mountains by the power of God. Okay, I'll do that again. We go. Faith as small as a mustard seed can move mountains. Can move another mountain. Move mountains. Faith as small as a mustard seed. Can move mountains by the power of God. We got that? We're all right on that bit. Okay, the next bit goes like this. We're going to go, believe what Jesus said was true. Okay, believe what Jesus said was true. Believe he meant it just for you. Okay, then we're going to go, wait and see what God will do as we pray. A, A. Okay, have we got that? Have we got that, adults? We all okay on that? You'll learn it as we go. It's quite repetitive. We'll get there. Okay? Should we give it a go? Right, would you like to stand and we'll sing Faith as Small as a Mustard?
nice thought. Thank you, young people. That was brilliant. And well done, adults, as well. I saw some of you doing the actions. That's good. Now, last week, uh, we saw the first video of this year's self-denial appeal. Uh, and so now we're just going to take time to watch the second in that series. Hello, and welcome to the second of our films for this year's self-denial appeal. For this year's self-denial appeal, we're looking at how the Salvation Army around the world is caring for creation and responding to climate change. This week, I'll be talking to George Abundo in Kenya. George is a project manager working on water, sanitation and hygiene, as well as food security projects across the country. The Salvation Army in Kenya is growing. Its two territories now have over 400,000 members, if you include junior soldiers. The country as a whole has seen economic growth, but there is still widespread poverty. Subsistence farmers who rely on predictable rainy seasons have been hit hard by changing weather patterns. George is in Nairobi today. Let's see if I can get hold of him. George, uh, thank you so much for being with us uh, today. It's wonderful to have you with us. Thank you so much. I really appreciate the invitation. So obviously we're thinking a little bit over here about care for creation and the impact of climate change. George, what are you seeing where you are? Climate change, I want to say, is a, is a big thing here. It's something which is affecting people mm -hmm. because now the weather patterns have really been unpredictable. Mm -hmm. It's a real concern. And uh, almost two-thirds of Kenya is arid and semi-arid, experiencing severe drought. Mm -hmm. So when you add to that to climate change challenges, then you find that uh, the situation is quite disparate. Sometimes in Kenya, you find children going without food, women, people with a disability going without water. They suffered communicable diseases such as diarrhea, malnutrition, the people who actually destroy the climate, the big contributors <laughs> are mainly in the developed world. Yeah. But the greatest people who suffer mm -hmm. the impact of climate change are people in this region. And the vulnerable population, the poor, are really affected mm. by the impacts of climate change. So with all of these impacts coming towards you, all of these changes that are affecting, as you say, livelihoods, ability to farm, the droughts in these already arid areas, what are the projects that you're working on right now to deal with this climate change? Currently, the project that I'm leading is focusing on resilience, looking at the water, sanitation, hygiene, food security, uh, issues of economic empowerment, but through a resilience lens. Mm. Because the starting point is for people to understand climate change. Mm. You must understand how to adapt. Yeah. And even some of the mitigation measures. For instance, the picture that I sent on over Bohon, mm. fitted with solar energy. So that is also an innovative way of ensuring that you tap into that. Instead of, again, spending money on electricity, we are encouraging people to uh, capitalize on the free solar energy to power their water tanks. Yeah. So that is one of the innovative ways of actually even implementing our projects. Um, George, one of the pictures that you sent through was of a, a sand dam. Uh, it's an extraordinary picture. Can you, can you explain to us what that is and what its purpose is? Yes. A sand dam is a, is a water collection structure, just to put it simply. That uh, construction now impounds or collects both sand and water. Uh. And the excess water passes downstream. 
So if you look at the vegetation around that sand dam, with the time you find that the water table will now rise. Right. And even the vegetation around the sand dam will even improve, yeah? From arid vegetation to a flourishing vegetation. Mm. And in fact, I want to mention this, that the UK territory has really supported quite a number of sand dams. And the sand dams that they have supported are very successful. Yes. The impact might not be very fast, but with time, the sand dams that we did five years ago, now huge impact, even on agriculture, on food availability, on tree planting, on the general climate, on livestock, water availability to households, huge impact. Yeah. Yes. George, thank you so much for spending time with me today. Bless you. Thank you and God bless you. God bless UK territory and many other territories. Mm. We value your support and we look forward mm. to a continued uh, working uh, relationship with you. Oh. We wish you well and we wish them well, especially now during this pandemic. Yeah. Thank you so much and God bless you. Bless you. Bye. <laughs> In next week's film, I'll be talking to Colonel Yusak Tampi in Indonesia. That's a great, great image, isn't it? And can I just remind you that from here in Gloucester, we're going to be taking up a, a, a collection of money on the first Sunday in March. Um, we invite you all to take part in that. For that money, we'll be supporting those kinds of projects around the world. And if you're not uh, a member of this co worshipping community, but maybe you're watching this on YouTube later in the week, um, find your local Salvation Army Centre, for they will be having a, a collection as well. Um, but please send in your, your gifts of finance that will support the Salvation Army projects around the world. Uh, first Sunday in, in March, or any time leading up to that, and details of that will become available very shortly on our websites and Facebook pages. So please look out for that and please think how you can contribute to the work of the Salvation Army around the world. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you for that. Uh, right, we now move on to the exciting part of YP Annual. Um, so we're going to move into our time now where we present our prizes to our young people. So I'm going to invite uh, Catherine and Caroline and Major Gareth to sort of head over to, to that exciting looking table over there. Um, Catherine, I'll let you start. I think you've got, I think you've got the easiest job today. <laughs> okay, we're going to start with naming out the, the names of the children who are now cradle or they're our very smallest children none of whom are actually here this morning, but they are in, they, they're starting with that important link into our children's work and ministry. And so I'm going to hold this microphone here so Catherine can read out these names. So we've got Alexander, we've got Joseph and Finley. Okay, so those, those are the three at the moment on our cradle roll. And uh, I'm really grateful, Catherine, for the links that you're making with these young families um, with their children and supporting them in that way. From the cradle roll, we move to the next group. I'm, I'm presuming. Caroline, the, the smaller children in our congregation, some of whom are here. And if, you're, if you are here and we call out your name, can you come up onto the platform and receive your book? If your name is not being called out, then can I just say, is this, are these the children that go to were part of the, the Bubbles group on a Sunday morning. Okay, this was the Sunday morning crew. Okay, here we go. Elsie May. Elsie May's not here this morning, but... Caden. Caden's not here. Maddie. Ma anyone called Maddie here this morning? Come on, Maddie. Come on, Maddie. Are you any good at colouring in? Yeah. Are you? Well, look, here's an activity book with lots of stories from the Bible for you to, to take home and do some work on 
okay? And if necessary, grab an adult and help. Okay. All right, there you go. Harry. Who with Elsie May is not here? Freya. Freya. Here we go, Freya. No, I think you're good at colouring in as well, aren't you? Yes. Excellent. So there's a, a colouring and activity book for you as well with some Bible stories in. So you take that away and do that. Well done. And then I think there are some of our children who are a little bit older in that group who are on the verge of moving up. Moving up to juniors, yes. Okay. Debbie? Sebi, growing up so fast. Hey, here's a. Oh, oh, God, this is heavy. There we go. Hands on Bible, packed with things for you. Well done. Okay, it's not heavy. It's just me. I'm getting old and weak. There you go. All right. Well done, Sebi. Candice, who's not here. Emily, who's not here. Isabel. And Isabel. There you go, Isabel. That's that's for you. All right. How old are you now? Uh, <laughs> How many birthdays have you had? Seven. Seven. That means you are seven. Well done, you. Well done, Isabel. Thank you. And James is not here. So. We've, uh, let's just, all those who've already had a prize, let's say a big cheer for them and a round of applause. Hooray! <laughs> now, again, we're moving up to some of the older young people. Is that right? Yeah, so we've got um, a fine, well, a couple of final prizes. Uh, so we've got one for Olivia Slack, uh, who's turned 12, and so we'll be... Uh, leaving our Sunday school, moving up to our safe group. Excellent. And who's next? Uh, so moving on to our Monday Mayhem family, I've got Jessica. Jessica. There's a, there's a book prize for you. Those of you who were in the meeting or weren't in the meeting perhaps a couple of weeks ago, we were saying that the, uh, these activity packs that have been going out to, to families have been very successful. Jessica, there you go. Congratulations and well done for being part of the Monday Mayhem team. Good. And then we've got Stacy here as well. And Stacy. Well done. Stacey, that's for you. Great stuff. And then um, all our Mayhem children who aren't here today, we've got Alex, we've got Emily, Eileen, Ashley, Louis, Renisha, Leon, Emma, Willow, Michaela, and Charlotte as well. So we've got loads more prizes to give out yet. Brilliant. Well done, everybody. And then this other prize. Andy's going to come up and... Uh, Good. Oh, thank you. So we, we have a final prize that would have been done last year. Um, so James, could you join me? We, we were just talking about James in the week. I'm, I'm going to embarrass him now because I can. Um, but when, when we started Monday Mayhem, James was too young to come. Yeah, he was so small and too young to come. Now oh, here he is. Can you stay down on that level? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so James, this is your final prize we have for you, the Authentic Youth Bible. This is for you. We're going to do a, a big cheer and a round of applause for James very shortly. But yeah, James, it's, it's great to see you to see you grow and present this last prize to you. 
Uh, it was, yeah, it's been great having you as part of, of my Sunday school for many years and part of Monday Mayhem for many years. So yeah, I'm really proud of to see you here today and to do this for you. Should we pray for James? Father God, we want to thank you for James as we thank you for all of our young people who have received prizes here today. Thank you for who they all are, for what they bring. Lord, just be with James as he goes off, uh, as he goes into the world, as he goes to school. Just uh, be with him and let may others see that, uh, that he knows you, that he's your friend as he goes about his, uh, his schooling, as he goes about his life. And just, Lord, be, uh, be a big influence in James' life as he can be an influence in others. Amen. There he is. Big cheer and a round of applause for James. I hope those of you who are perhaps not a regular part of our worship community can see a pattern here of the very small children from birth being cared for, looked after, joined up. Then we have Sunday school and we have this Monday Mayhem Bible Club as well. And we try and look after our children all the way through. Um, there's some, some good news on the horizon that, that Mike is going to restart with the help of others here, Caroline and others, the, the Sunday school program um, in a couple of weeks' time. Hopefully, that more news on that later. Um, and also, hopefully, Monday Mayhem will also be something that will get off the ground again in person. But in the meantime... I want to say thank you to everybody that's been working with and being a part of this children's ministry in our core. And as you've seen and heard, there's lots of families linked in. If you know of young families in the area who would value being linked in with a church community, then please let us know and we can um, make those, forge those links with them. And I'm sure we, this way we can see God's kingdom growing for our young people. Thanks. And well done to Mike as well. And on to that, I just want to add a, a huge thank you to the YP League. Um, you know, without your support, we wouldn't be able to do these prizes. We wouldn't be able to do any of our, our children's work. So thank you to the YP League for all your support. Uh, we're going to turn to our Bible reading now. Uh, Nathan's going to come and bring it. And I wonder if those of you who've just received a Bible might want to open it and have a look. Uh, Matthew chapter 17, verses 14 to 20. Thank you, Nathan. Matthew 17, verses 14 to 20. When they came to the crowd, a man approached Jesus and knelt before him. Lord, have mercy on my son, he said. He has seizures and is suffering greatly. He often falls into the fire. Or, or into the water. I brought him to your disciples, but they could not heal him. O oh, unbelieving and perverse generation, Jesus replied, how long, sh how long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring the boy here to me. Jesus, Jesus rebuked the demon, and it came out of the boy, and he was healed from that moment. Then, then the disciples came to Jesus in private and asked, why couldn't we drive it out? He replied, Because you have so little faith. I, I tell you the truth. If you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, Move from here to there, and, and it will move. Nothing will, be, it, it, nothing will be impossible for you. Thank you, Nathan. Uh, we look forward now to the message from the songsters.
songsters. Now I wonder, is anyone here a Star Wars fan? Yeah, a few hands. Not very many. No Star Wars fans? Okay. Well, it won't come as a shock to most of you that I'm quite a big Star Wars fan. I, uh, I rewatch all the films far too often. I've got DVDs and books and posters and games and a lot of Star Wars Lego. One of the most well-known characters from Star Wars is Yoda. Have you all heard of Yoda? You know, the guy, small, green, puts his words in a funny order. He's also shown to be one of the most powerful and wise characters in the Star Wars universe. Now, when Luke Skywalker first meets Yoda, he assumes he's just some wacky local, until Yoda reveals who he really is. Even then, Luke underestimates just how powerful Yoda actually is until he does something Luke thought was impossible. Luke's X-Wing, which is his ship for those of you who haven't seen it, was stuck in a swamp, and he couldn't get it out, even when he tried to use the Force. He gave up, saying it was too big. Yoda replied, size matters not. Look at me, judge me by my size, do you? I told you he spoke a bit weirdly. And he then proceeds to lift the ship out of the swamp, placing it safely on the ground. Luke exclaims, I don't believe it. To which Yoda simply responds, that is why you fail. I haven't just told you all that to geek out on Star Wars for a bit, as fun as that is. Actually, I think the lessons Yoda is trying to teach Luke here parallel some of the things Jesus tried to teach his disciples. Yoda tells Luke if he doesn't believe something is possible, then he will fail. Jesus teaches us the same thing in a slightly more positive way. He said, if you had faith even as small as a mustard seed... You could, say, move to, you could say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it would move. Nothing would be impossible. Now, I have a mustard seed here, so we can see just how small we're talking. Can you see it? No. Can you imagine how much faith we need to have to equate to the size of this mustard seed? It can be very easy for us to say we have faith, but just like we saw with our trust falls earlier, When we're tested on our faith, we sometimes stutter. Even the disciples, people who were with Jesus and had seen him do incredible things, were guilty of this. But actually, God will never ask us to do more than we're capable of. He doesn't ask us to have faith the size of a mountain to move a mustard seed. It's the other way around. With just a small amount of faith in God, he helps us to achieve seemingly impossible things. And all he asks is that we trust in him and his word. The other thing Yoda said, and I promise I'll stop referencing Yoda soon, is size matters not. He was underestimated by Luke because he was short, and when they first met, because he was eating Luke's food and messing with his belongings. How often do we judge others on things like looks, age, actions? I'm definitely guilty of it. But actually, these things don't matter. Take another look at the mustard seed, if you can. It's tiny, only a millimetre or two wide, but it's capable of growing a tree that's nearly nine foot tall. It wouldn't be my piano if I didn't make reference to Matthew 19, verse 14. Jesus said, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. We're blessed at Gloucester to have these young people in our core family, and they are growing up alarmingly fast. I couldn't believe how many Bibles we were giving out for children moving from bubbles to GLU. Now these children are only small in the grand scheme of things, but they're capable of incredible things. For example, Seb can already run 5k in less time than it takes me to get ready in the morning. We cannot afford to underestimate anyone in our core family, but today I'm focusing on our young people. They have the ability already to help us learn so much as well as share their love for God with other people. And it's our responsibility as fellow children of God to support and encourage them on their journeys with him. One final quote from Yoda. Do or do not. There is no try. Jesus didn't tell his disciples to try and have faith and then try and heal the sick boy. He told them to have faith. It doesn't matter if it's a small amount. And through God... All things are possible. We're going to sing again uh, song number 892 in your songbook. 
which simply says, simply trusting every day, trusting through a stormy way, even when my faith is small, trusting Jesus, that is all. Let's see. Shall we pray together? Father God, help us to have faith. However small, we know it doesn't matter. I pray that we'll be reminded of your presence and that in all that we do, we'll trust in you. Amen. Uh, I'm going to invite our young people to come back on the platform to help me for our final song, um, which hopefully you will all know we've done it quite a few times now. Uh, we're going to sing the song, Nothing's Too Big for His Power, Nothing's Too Little for His Care. He's the God of the big, God of the small, little, God of the stuff, something in the middle. That's the one. Uh, here we go. All right, would you like to stand and we'll sing the song through? Thank you.
And so to the final benediction, some words from Ephesians 3. I pray that from his glorious, unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it's too great to understand fully. Then you'll be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Amen.